Hello, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf, and 2010 has been generally a strange year weather-wise, and we've seen a lot of problems uh, around the country with the diseases like bacteria wilt showed up where the plants were stressed. Well, we had another uh, interesting sample come in just a couple days ago, and uh, this is what it looks like. And you can see the turf has grown out because it's been in the lab for several days. And if we turn it sideways, you can see there's a good uh, amount of uh, suppressed turf uh, right in, in those, uh, in those de depressed areas. And the pattern was sort of ring-shaped, and there is plenty of bacteria associated with these uh, plants in this depressed area. But there's also another, nor another organism in there that we're going to take a look at, and we'll show you why we think that probably is the cause and uh, what we would do in a case like this, where we, where you, we uh, have a little something different. Well, if you use the dissecting microscope to look at the normal plants and then scan over to the stress plants, you can see there's quite a difference in the appearance of the plants. And as we look closer and, and scan around the samples, there's a few interesting plants that we can look at, some that are typical and some that are a little different. In this case, we can see the chlorophyll has completely uh, stopped developing at the base of the leaf. Uh, in this sample in the center of the image. So we've got a, a bleached out look that is similar to the white leaf disease that we see uh, sometimes that affects these plants. The bulk of the plants, however, look like this one, which has a uh, new leaf that looks okay, which is a good sign that these plants may recover. And then the second leaf looks okay, but the third leaf uh, is chlorotic. So there's something happened that was a fairly uh, distinct uh, period of time because the entire third leaf is uh, is chlorotic and we'll see that in a number of the plants uh, as we look around there's another plant just behind that leaf I'm flattening out the third leaf uh, is uh, chlorotic uh, so that's sort of the uh, the top symptoms that we're seeing that the leaves are solid they're not decaying so it's very interesting uh, if we look at another one of these uh, samples where we see the bleaching effect we can the base of the plant you can see is dark, which is uh, very similar to what we'd see with summer patch. Uh, but you can see you've got a nice bleached out uh, section of the leaf. So it looks like something happened, probably something environmental that, that triggered, I don't know, maybe a toxin or some sort of a, an effect that stopped those plants from producing their chloroplasts. When we look under a microscope at the base of the plant, we'll see these structures, which are growth cessation structures and also these dark hyphae that are running down the plant, which are uh, ectotrophic uh, hyphae, which we call them dark ectotrophic hyphae, and it classifies that whole group of fungi. Uh, normally, ascomycetes, uh, summer patch, take all patch, those types of organisms uh, that attack the roots. And we can see the, these hyphae running down the plant. And this is primarily the pathogen that we're seeing that we feel is the primary pathogen on this disease, but the disease looks a little bit different uh, in the field than it normally would. So we think there's some other interactions going on in the plant, not just this single pathogen uh, that might be interacting. Here we see another small root where we're seeing what looks like the growth cessation structures of uh, Magnaporthopoe or summer patch. Uh, and you can see that it's quite uh, dense in the root. There's not a lot of uh, ectotrophic hyphae on this root, but it looks like we're seeing maybe internal infection in the production of these growth cessation structures or survival structures of the summer patch fungus. But as I mentioned, it, it looks like there were some other fungi involved and as we scanned around some of the other roots, we ran into this organism, which is the polymyxa. It's the resting spores of a polymyxa. It's a catridiomite obligate parasite, a catridiomycete obligate parasite of plants. It normally doesn't cause serious problems, but it's possible that interacting with the summer patch, we're getting a little bit of a different symptom. In addition to this organism, we ran into uh, some of the mycorrhizal fungi attacking the roots. Uh, normally would be beneficial, but in cases where the plants are stressed, maybe all of them together resulted in a different symptom. This sample provided a good example of the type of complex interactions that we might encounter when trying to diagnose a turf grass disease that doesn't look exactly like you would expect it to look in the field for one of the well-known pathogens. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video and take a look at some of the information on polymyxa and olpidium uh, that are associated with this, uh, with this video.